Okay, so once you download the package from the link mentioned in my website, so you'll be getting this list of files. So among uh, these files, these two are the appliances which will be required in the GNS3 application. And there are two other files that is named as VMX bundle. The VMX bundle file is used to set up GNS3. So in this case, we can see we have two files, the VMX bundle and VMX bundle ESXi. So we need the VMX bundle version as it is the KVM based appliance image file. So what we need to do is uh, we need to extract the file and the file size is more than 4 GB. So the extraction time will be a bit longer in this case. Okay, so after the extraction is finished, we need to move inside of the GNS3 plant folder that is the VMX bundle and inside this we have got a tar and we need to extract this one too. Okay, so it is finished now. Okay, so moving to the VMX one. Now inside the images folder. Now in here we need to select the four required files only. Other files are not required for our GNS3 uh, lab setup. Just we need to select these four specific files which I'll mention in the uh, description below. And in my website is also mentioned which files are required. Just copy these files and create a separate folder. And you can name it as the GNS3 VM or something. And I've already done that. So you can see, uh, see I have the folder here. Yes. So see in here I have the required four files. Only these four files are required for setting up the VMX uh, appliance in your GNS3. So what you need to do next is just you have to copy these files inside of your GNS3 server which is running in my computer in VMware workstation, right? So just move into OPT, then go into GNS3, then images and then the KMU subfolder. In the KMU subfolder, you need to drag those images and paste it out. So it's the KMU folder. So I have already uh, pasted the images right here. So all the four files which you have uh, selected earlier, those four files need to be present in this particular location. That is OPT, GNS3, images and inside that KMU folder. So drag and drop or you can upload it as per your choice. But the four files should be present here in this location. Okay, next we need to use the GNS3 appliance files. These are already modified to use the latest version of the VMX trial which has been av made available on the Juniverse website. So no need to worry about that. Just click on file, then click on import appliance. Then select the GNS3 appliance file. Uh, now here since I am uh, recording this uh, tutorial in my laptop and the GNS3 is running in my desktop PC. So what I'll be doing is I have to select the remote server because I have to select my uh, desktop PC where the VMware server is running. But for your case, you may be running the GNS3 VM in the same system as you are working on your project. So you can select the GNS3 VM. So after that, you have to select the VCP and then click on finish. Similarly, you need the second appliance to be set up that is the VFP that is the virtual forwarding plane and click on the appliance and again click on your required scenarios then click on next and select the version that is 18.2 click next and finish. Okay, now the two appliances will be displayed in your side panel and you can just drag them inside your project window. Now here you need to be clarified among two important things that is the uh, EM1 interface and the FXP0 interface. The EM1 interface stands for the internal interface which is used to connect the virtual forwarding plane and the virtual control plane that is their internal communication interface and for management purpose we can use the FXP0 interface of uh, VCP and VFP and we can connect them to a management switch just for some out-of-the-box remote management purposes okay 
So in uh, VFP, the interface, the first interface, that is the GE0 by 0 by 0, that is equivalent to the EM1 interface. So you can either rename the interface in your appliance file or you can just use it uh, and make a note to yourself. So what you can do is like connect the interfaces as required the FXP to the management switch and the EM1 interface internally between the VMX and VXC and then we can power on the virtual machines. So I have seen the average boot up time for the VCP appliances around 2 to 2 and a half minutes depending on my hardware configuration that is I am running on an 8 core processor with a 16 gig RAM. So this is the configuration and it is taking around two and a half minutes for booting up the VCP. And for the VFP it is quite fast since it is running a simple Linux version. So it is quite fast and the default username for a VCP is root and there is no password and for a VFP the username and password both is root. Okay. Uh, next, we can check the show version command and see if we have installed everything correctly. It's 18.2 or 1.9 and other things are fine as required. So on the right hand side, you can see the VFP. There are several lines which are coming up. And these are nothing but the internal communication which is taking place between the VCP and the VFP, both the appliances. Okay, next coming back to the VFP, we can see there are uh, continuous requests for DHCP and for the chassis upgrade. So, we can just uh, delete the chassis auto upgrade uh, using the command delete chassis auto upgrade. And then you can uh, save the changes as you turn it. Okay, so changes are uh, made and then we can view the interfaces once and see the internal and the external interface. So here we can see the EA1 interface which has the IP of 128.0.0.1 and 4 and along with that FX3.0 interface which is the management interface. So what I'm going to do is ping the VFP whose IP address will be uh, .16.128.0.0.16 and I'll make the source interface EM1. Check if the internal connectivity is okay or not. Okay, so we are getting the ping response from the VFP from the IP address 0.16. So which indicates that the uh, mm, internal connectivity is fine. So let's log in to the VFP now using the password root. Okay, once more. Yeah, we are logged into the VFP and let's just check the con IP configuration. So you can see there is the interface name is IMP and the IP address is 0 0.16. This is the EFX, uh, EM1 interface in VFP. Okay, so let's uh, check the connectivity. So chassis FPC, then we'll hit the stop, that is the zero, and we'll check if the chassis is online or not. So we can see the state is uh, online. And if we click on uh, detail, then we'll give some other information regarding the RAM, users, and uptime. So for demonstration, what I'll be doing is I'll be temporarily disconnecting or suspending the internal link, and I'll show you how it works. So next, when we are going to issue the command, then we will see there is no information. So that means that the chassis is disconnected from the VFP and there is no um, internal communication between them. So what I am going to do is uh, I am going to again re-enable the internal communication link right now. Okay, so it is re-enabled and then uh, we can we will, will be again issuing the command so chassis FPC D0. So, see, as soon as we uh, enable the interface, the internal communication began, and we can see all the uh, messages on the VFP's screen, VFP's terminal. Rather. Okay, so now we can see the state is present, the state will change to online within a few seconds. Ah, okay, the state is now changed to online, and our chassis is up and running. This completes the basic installation of the appliance VFP and VCP in GNS3 and setting them up. And next, we will be going to see how the licensing works. Okay, so let's uh, view the current license, so, uh, show system license, and we can see there is no license installed. And what we are going to do is we'll just issue the command request system at 
click sorry click the system license at terminal and we'll be pasting the trial license key which has been all, uh, already there in the folder which we have downloaded and okay, let's try one more once more and okay copy it and then paste it out then go to the next line using enter and then press ctrl and d together okay so next again view the license shows license uh, sorry so system license and you can see all the licenses are installed for a period of 60 days that is the juniper evaluation license and you can try out all the juniper features and ins and outs for 60 days without any limits so this completes the video